Alrighty, good morning. This is Dennis Miracle. I'm going to be demonstrating something I learned off of a um, John Deere video uh, about a different way to close uh, any of the bags I've made. I would, I think, as I recall, probably all of them could use this technique, but it's a technique I'm going to use going forward, and um, I'm going to be making it on a Janome 550E, and I'm using the biggest hoop, which is 8 by 14, I believe. Um, but it's an 8 by 12 uh, uh, design, and it's my latest design, uh, uh, the Ramona purse. And so I just wanted to show this to you because I, I really thought this was a neat way to, uh, to close the bags up because you don't have to do any sewing uh, but there are trade-offs and I'll show you what the trade-offs trade-offs are a little bit later so I have hooped my fabric and it's not very tight but uh, it'll be okay I have cut I always cut if I'm doing it 7 by 12 I cut 8 by 13 uh, pieces of uh, fabric I've cut two pieces of lining fabric this is just muslin and then I've cut some uh, two pieces of batting, and I have cut, here's, well, where's the other one? Uh, here's the, the bag we'll be making, and uh, so I have chosen a, this as my uh, main fabric. I think it's a, uh, in the beginning, uh, pattern, uh, and I'm gonna use it here and then my overlay my applique is going to be this right here and it's so odd that I walked into my sewing disaster area this morning and those two pieces of fabric were just together and I just said gosh they go together I can't believe that somehow that appeared um, and as I say they're cut the main pieces are cut uh, 9 by 13 as I say if you use 8 by 12 always uh, make an inch bigger each direction um, or really it comes out to be I guess a half an inch uh, and then I cut this little piece uh, a little smaller because as you can see it doesn't take up the entire uh, front it's probably what four or five inches there but I have doubled this over because I don't want it to, it'll go on top of this, and it was a little thin, and I didn't want it to show through and have this coming through, so I just double this piece over. And uh, anyhow, I'm going to stick this, uh, I have pulled up the pattern on the 550 Janome, and I'm going to run the placement stitches, and I'll be right back. All right, I have... Uh, I did the outline stitches as you can see and I placed this green uh, piece of uh, construction paper under here so you can see the lines because they're impossible to see. This is a light. I just used what was already in there because it wouldn't make any difference. This is all going to be covered up. Uh, but now I have changed my thread to a yellow to match this right here. Anyhow, um, this end is the this machine uh, the Janome 550 mounts on the right hand side of the machine as opposed to the Brothers and the uh, Vikings and baby locks that uh, attach on the left side so uh, with this machine I'd be attaching here to the machine right here and I have closed the end of the zipper area here so uh, I've left it open down here so this is where you should put the head of your zipper uh, to the bottom. Uh, but you can, when you print this out, you can see that there's an extra line printed here closing this. So uh, anyhow, that should be, you know, just watch that. Uh, so I have taken one of these zippers that I bought in mass uh, that is a blind, a, uh, what is it called? A hidden zipper, 
uh, and I didn't know that before I I didn't realize that's what it was but it it works the same it's uh, actually I like the way it looks better than regular uh, number three zipper nylon zippers so I'm going to tape this right up here and I'm going to put a little tape right along the edge here and I'm going to tape it right down here so let me do that and I'll be right back okay actually you can see that I've taped it down here and I actually taped it along the top right here you can barely see it and I taped it down here at the bottom uh, and there's the uh, the actual head of the zipper so let me stick this in the machine and the next step will sew this zipper down all right now you can barely see I have uh, done a triple stitch along here to and you can see that it just went right over the zipper and that the zipper is open down on this side. Anyhow, our next step is going to be to turn the hoop over and attach, well, no, I'm going to deviate. I'm, uh, at this point, I'm going to take and I'm going to slice this zipper open here, not the zipper itself, but the the uh, no-show mesh so let me do that and I'll be right back and well wait a minute I always use just a seam ripper but you need to get the seam ripper with a ball on it and all these balls fall off it seems uh, but I start here and gently prick in prick there so I have know that I haven't gone through the zipper itself and I can see the head of the thing uh, so I'm gonna just go right along like this okay I'm meeting some resistance okay okay when I get down to the end I'm gonna go in right here didn't cut my I didn't cut my zipper okay and I'm gonna go the same way you just go back along here and remove this piece at this point so I'll be right back all right you can see I've cut this open here along the zipper it makes it easier to get it done now I've found so I'm going to take my oh my piece the first piece of lining which I say I'm just gonna use this muslin um, and I'm going to place it you can see the zipper through here on the other side. I'm on the back side now of the hoop, and I'm gonna place the fabric along this bottom row of stitching. You can see it right there barely. So I'm going to tape it along, tape it down there, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've just taped a little piece across each corner. Sometimes I just tape the whole thing down. That does use a lot of tape, but Anyhow, just taped on the corners, and then I'm going to pick this hoop up and let that, oh, feels like it's coming apart, I hope, hoop, no, it didn't, okay, so now we're, I've let this piece of lining uh, come over to the front side, and I'm going to take and do this, fold that, fold it again, and these hoops are nice because they've got a, some extra area to put tape on. So I'm going to tape this down because we need this to stay right where it's at for a good while. So let me do that. All right, you can see I have taped right here the lining fabric onto the hoop so it doesn't move uh, because we just uh, need it to stay out of the way. And I'm going to take my main piece of fabric which I consider this the main piece of fabric here this this part and and that will be my greenish color here and I oh well I didn't cut it in two okay well I'll have to cut it in two uh, but let me do that and I'll be right back okay now I've cut that piece of fabric in two the nine by thirteen uh, and so let me put it face down and it's gonna 
Now we're on the front side of the hoop, uh, face down, uh, and right against this very edge of the zipper. So, make sure I'm over the edges, uh, and you can see here, so yes, I am covering the edges, and the same way over here, I'm quite a bit, so I'm going to pull this over that way to make it kind of even, and then I'm going to tape this down right along through, I'll probably tape it the whole way over, so let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see I've taped all the way across here. Uh, and for those of you who have made my bags, this is all going to be very familiar. I'm, you know, we don't, the last two steps are what are different. So, uh, anyhow, let me put this in the machine and it's going to tack this, uh, down these, the front piece and, uh, this front piece here and then the bottom, uh, piece of, uh, uh what's going to be the lining. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. You can see that I have, uh, the stitching along here and then turning it over you can see the stitching here too you always want to check your back side because sometimes things get folded over when it's moving in the machine and all kinds of stuff happens so uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to put one of my pieces of uh, batting or whatever you're using for I, I use a lot of stuff. I use whatever's on hand for batting. Now I have about three big rolls of batting, but sometimes I'll use a towel, an old towel, um, just, you know, whatever to give it a little substance. So in any case, this is batting. So I have put this right, maybe a quarter inch under the seam line. I'm gonna take this and fold this down like this. And I'm gonna take it out to my iron and just give it a little press to make it a little smoother. Um, I don't always do this, but I do have the iron handy today, even though it's sitting out in the hallway, because there's no room here in my uh, sewing room. And you'd think there would be, since the room is about 19 by 15, but anyhow, be that as it may, I'll be right back. Okay, I did my little bit of pressing, and I pressed it away from the, pressed it this way, away from the zipper. So I'm going to stick this in, run the next step, which will go all the way around, on, uh, like I'm showing you with my finger, and uh, end right here. And so let me go ahead and do that. All right, I had to step away for a few minutes, and my brain has taken a little side trip. So I think I was showing you the last step was that I had sewn it away from, or pressed it away from the zipper, and then I put it in the machine, and it has gone around all four corners to, uh, to, uh, stitch down, uh, the main fabric and the, uh, piece of batting. So the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to stick it in the machine, and it will make a placement stitch for this, uh, pretty little design here. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, now you can see that the placement stitch has been placed down and across here and all of this right through here. So now I'm going to take that pretty piece of the yellowish fabric that I had folded over so it's nice and thick and not going to show through and I'm going to just place it uh, because it's going to be sewn down across here at the top. So. I placed it. I'm going to stick it in the machine. I don't see any reason to to uh, tape it down. It should be fine. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see that the stitching has uh, been uh, done here, and this is just tacked down this piece. And I'm going to take my double uh, double curved applique scissors and cut right along through here and just right up through here down here and etc etc as close as I can without cutting into the stitches hopefully if you cut into a few it's not the end of the world we will be doing uh, uh, of course satin stitches over that area of four millimeters what I've been using lately so that's pretty thick pretty wide I mean so anyhow let me go and do that and then I'll be back in a moment Okay, as you can see, I have trimmed now the lovely piece here, and then uh, the next step 
is a little bit unusual. I'm going to do just, I'm not putting a bunch of fancy fills on here. I'm just going to do regular basic stippling because I just want to keep it simple. So it's, I'm going to do the stippling. It'll stipple all over both areas and then I'll run the um, uh, satin stitch or tatami stitch. Uh, actually, it's a fill. It's a tatami fill that'll go across here and across here. So let me do that. I'll do this next step and I'll be right back. All right, as you can see, I did run the stippling and then I went to the next step and ran the uh, uh, satin stitching and I changed it back to a regular satin stitch instead of one with uh, some uh, pattern built in because that pattern made the design 34,000 stitches instead of 21 and I just thought that was probably a lot more than people wanted to deal with. Um, it has a little area here which I don't know why and I cannot get it to cut it cut off right here for some reason but uh, I'm gonna leave it be and when I trim it it will be cut off and it should be fine so uh, now here's where the magic comes in number one we're going to take off this piece of tape so we can open up the zipper and let me put the well let me see if I can do this no I can't let me put the well, maybe I can. I always surprise myself when I can do this with one hand. Okay, okay. it's going to work. Okay, I'm going to open it about three quarters of the way. Okay, oh, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. That's fine, you can leave that open, but for the next thing we have to do is take and release this uh, fabric here so it can fall back to the back. This is going to be one of the lining pieces. So let's let it let's let it fall back and just give it kind of smooth it out there and let me take and Let's put a little tape down here. I'll reuse this tape I already had, and uh, on this corner too. I should have. I didn't. Okay, this is going to be a. I didn't iron this. I should have ironed the other part, but not this muslin. All right. Well, that's just going to have to be the way it is. So it'll be fine. Anyhow, I'm going to stick the uh, design back in the uh, machine and it will run another uh, stitch line all around all four corners and it'll tack down, it'll sew down this back piece of lining. So let me do that. We're almost done. Okay, now you see that uh, there has been another stitch go along through here. This is this was not in the way, it was over this way, and I'd forgotten about with this particular kind of zipper, uh, you need to put some tape on it. When you have a regular zipper that is not a hidden zipper, this little uh, pole here can't really move much, not like this one. So if you happen to use any of these, be careful and tape this down. But thankfully I saw what was happening and avoided a potential disaster. So, uh, and this is where the fun comes in, or what I think is neat. So we... Okay, uh, my apologies. As I was saying, uh, I had just made this a regular satin stitch because the other stitch uh, created 12,000 extra stitches to put uh, a pretty pattern, and I didn't... So I've just made this satin. I think it looks fine, anyhow. Uh, okay, the fun part comes now, which is different. So let me grab, I've made my little doodad here uh, to hold on to, and I'm going to tape that down right about here. 
and make sure your zipper is open at this point. So let me do that. Okay, so I've got this tape down now. This is where it gets interesting. You take your, um, as you would usually do when making any of my purses, you take your back fabric, put it face down, making sure you cover the entire area, including I always cover the zipper too. Then you take, I always put a piece of uh, batting here to give it a little substance. So we've got the exterior fabric, which is the back of the purse, face down. Got your, this piece of batting, and then you take, instead of turning it over and putting uh, the uh, other, the second piece of lining, you put the lining just like this. Now, if this were a lining with uh, a pattern on it, you would put this lining face up. This lining would be face up, but it's obviously just solid white, so uh, anyhow, that should that should be it. Now put everything in the uh, put it all in the machine and we have the one last step and so I'll be right back. Okay, I did, ran the last uh, stitch and you see it all, went all the way around and I've made this a uh, this type of stitch here. I think it's uh, an E stitch is what I believe it is. And I placed this little piece of fabric here just to make sure I'm right about this because this is all new to me too that this should end up uh, being, I place this here, so when I turn it out, this should end up being uh, on the inside uh, as if it were coloring the entire piece here. Since this is wide, I knew I couldn't tell uh, if things were right. But anyhow, uh, so now I'm gonna take it out of the hoop and I'm going to just, wow, I got very close over here to the, I'm gonna trim it all around about a quarter of an inch from the stitch line and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, after you've uh, uh, trimmed it all around, this is what you should have left. You can see that we had opened the zipper. What in the world are those two? I don't know what the hell this is. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> some strings. Where did that come from? Okay, well, let me just... Cut those. I don't know what happened there. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the zipper the rest of the way. Well, I'm not going to be able to do it because I I uh, uh, taped it down because it was floppy. But I'm going to. That's what I'm going to do, and uh, I'll be right back. Back to where I was. I don't have no idea where those red strings came from. I have used no red. They must have just been on this fabric and got caught up in the sewing. Anyhow, let me turn the bag out. As you see, we have no turning to do down here. It's already closed, so I'll turn it out and we'll see what we've got. Okay, I've turned the purse out and you see there's no difference down here. It's completely uh, smooth and uh, not a lot of thickness here in the seam itself. The seams are uh, not, as, not as fat. They're not as, they don't have as much material it seems in the uh, in there and let me open it up and show you I would take this now and I would do some pressing on it because here's the trade-offs and some of you may not want to may not like this and I understand if that's the truth if that's right all right I would go and go to the iron and just press this down this way you see it's got the E stitches here it's held together very well uh, but I would press it down like this where it'll lay like that. Now, looking in, I was right. Uh, there's that little piece I put on there to prove that that last piece, your lining piece, needs uh, the last thing you do with putting the lining piece there 
is put it face up. So on that last step, you put your exterior, back exterior piece face down. You put your uh, piece of batting, if you choose to use any kind of batting, uh, on top of that. And then you place your uh, piece of lining, your, your second piece of lining, uh, on top of that face up. So, and this is, let me put the phone down for a moment. Okay. All right. And this is what you have at the bottom. So, you know, it. I think it looks fine myself, uh, and I think actually it's a stronger bag because it's uh, closed uh, from the very beginning. Here, when you you have a little excess material right here on the end, you may want to. Uh, well, when you iron this down, hopefully this little. You may want to cut some of this excess right here off, but other than that, I think with this uh, ironed down, it'll look just fine. And um, I don't know, I just think this is a great way to make these bags and no more fooling with the closing hole. And uh, so that's what I wanted to show you, and um, this is available if you're interested. It's called the Ramona bag, and um, I appreciate you being with me. Uh, today and I always look forward to coming back with another video and something uh, to show and I apologize for using a curse word I'm only human um, and I don't know how to cut that out of the uh, of the uh, video I don't know how to extract that but anyhow I'm sure you've heard the word before so uh, thank you so much and you have a really great day Bye-bye. Well, I want to add one more thing. I did just take this and uh, uh, iron this down so uh, it, it looks better and it uh, is definitely held together well. So that's uh, all I wanted to show. Thank you.